evening. Bjorn Söder, member of Sweden Parliament, president of Sweden Armenia Friendship Group, is my guest tonight. Mr. Söder, thank you so much for this opportunity. Thank you. What brings you to Armenia? Well, we are here as a part of the friendship group, the Sweden Armenian Parliamentary Friendship Group, and we, we have planned this trip for three years now. But uh, finally, we could come here. There were a pandemic and a war between, but now we're finally here. You have been having meetings with state dignitaries. Is there a build-up of dynamics in relations between Sweden and Armenia, the uh, interparliamentary group inclusive? Yeah, we, we uh, as a, a part of the friendship group, we, uh, we have had uh, good uh, contacts and connections with the, um, our uh, um, opposite uh, side here from the friendship group uh, Armenian and uh, Sweden and for many years and we have a really good and strong uh, cooperation between us. Sweden has been assisting reforms in Armenia in justice and democracy, women entrepreneurship, as well as environmental protection, energy security. What's on the roadmap for the coming five years? I think if you look at the regional uh, program for, for, for Armenia and the whole region, I think it's almost the same. We will continue to work with those to strengthen the, the inst democratic institution here, but also the uh, engagement of uh, women in politics and uh, also hum humanitarian rights and uh, uh, and so, so uh, that we will keep uh, going and work with, uh, because I think we have a strong commitment in that, and Sweden is also somehow a role model when it comes to those things. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Undeniable. Let's uh, come to the region and regional concerns. Analysts believe that the window for peace in the region will open only if military balance is restored. That is quite asymmetric in favor of Azerbaijan right now. Sweden assists Armenia in many sectors that I already enumerated, and you agree with, but the basis for the rest of Flourish, the need for security, safe neighborhood is at risk. And so I'd like to ask, how can Sweden assist Armenia in the defense sector and or international diplomacy to help enhance security? I think uh, that within... In the, more tangible ways. Yeah, but within the European Union, I think uh, Sweden can play a, bit, a larger role than we had. I've uh, personally, I've... Uh, I'm quite disappointed of previous governments in Sweden, which didn't do anything, uh, I, I, from my point of view, during the war, for instance, there could be a more clear statements against what happened. But I think that, uh, and also the, the governments in Sweden also want to have a common view from the European side. So I think uh, if we work with that and uh, also to, to let Sweden be a, a, take the leadership in the European Union when it comes to to Armenia, that could be some way to, to uh, also to engage European Union more in, in uh, Armenia and Sweden Especially also. Especially that Sweden is chair at the EU right now. Exactly. Uh, so that could be a good point right now to, to also to lift up the, the situation here in a better way. Uh, and I mean, Sweden is uh, one of the founder of the Eastern Partnership, and we could do, do much more there in, in that concept uh, also. And also uh, Sweden is a member of the Minsk Group, so, so we have many areas to play in. Uh, so uh, I think Sweden could do much more uh, than we do already. What gets in the way? Well, I think um, there is a, some sort of tradition in Sweden, uh, if you compare to other uh, member states of the European Union, for instance, if you could compare to Lithuania, that uh, Sweden has uh, all, we, will always uh, it seems to, it's very, very important that, that the European Union has a common view and Sweden won't stick out and have their own opinion on things. So, of course, we can do things within the European Union, but then we, we, uh, I mean, we accept what the European Union and the rest of the member states thinks. If you compare that for the Lithuania, for instance, they, they often go their own way, even when it comes to foreign policy. And I think that Sweden can do much more in, on that area as well. Um. Do you believe that Armenia is being a member of CSTO prevents the EU from providing any uh, tangible military assistance? Yeah, I think that we, that affects the situation. Yeah, so uh, so I think that uh, one good thing was uh, should be for Armenia to leave the CSTO. But of course, then Armenia needs to have other security guarantees. Uh, but of course, that, that could be a problem, especially when providing uh, Armenia with the military equipment. And well. your impression is the EU, does the EU intend to provide those security guarantees? Well, the European Union is not a military union, so uh, there must be some bilateral agreements between Armenia and, and other member states for EU, for instance, or other countries uh, to provide those things that the European Union can do is to I mean, when it comes to... Um, Facilitate the process. Exactly. Uh, but when it comes to real military 
military forces, etc., then, then the European Union has no, they can't do anything about that. So that must be solved with bilateral agreements, I think. The peace treaty negotiations are held under constant militaristic rhetoric from Baku, heightened unrealistic demands within the scope of a peace treaty. Around many signs of Baku's intentions to escalate. What is uh, Sweden's stance on possible destabilization of the region, South Caucasus? Well, we have a serious situation here. That's, of course, uh, that's the truth. And, uh, and uh, I think uh, the EU mission we have now here with the uh, EU uh, mission in Armenia is an important thing for the European Union to have eyes on the ground to see what's happening here, to, to also to perhaps before things happen, to have a, a clear view on what's going to happen next step. Uh, but of course, the European Union and, and Sweden, we, we can't do any certain things. I mean, we, we, uh, we are backbone by, I mean, we, we don't have those uh, forces to, to do th things. So what we can do from the West, Western world and the European Union is to uh, condemn what's happening, to push uh, uh, Azerbaijan to, uh, for instance, lift the uh, uh, blockade of Latin Corridor, but also to move back the forces. Uh, and uh, what we can do is also on the political level uh, put sanctions on Azerbaijan, but that won't happen in the European Union because more and more states are more engaging with Azerbaijan right now. So uh, I think we have a serious situation and I don't have a solution to that. Oh, I was Otherwise, going to I ask what's I would the next be step elsewhere. to condemnations and uh, statements that yeah, do I not have a Yeah, I think that's, that's the first step to do. A practical result. From a political union, that's the first step to do is to, to make clear statements and also to uh, perhaps put uh, sanctions, that's uh, one thing we can do, uh, but try also in a political way to, uh, to force Azerbaijan to, to behave and to, to, uh, to also respect uh, human rights uh, and move back their forces and to de-escalate the situation instead of escalating it. After the 44-day war, Sweden-Armenia Friendship Group condemned the killings of Armenian soldiers by Baku, called on the international community to exert stronger pressure on Baku for Haliev's regime to repatriate Armenian prisoners of war. As of today, there are still dozens of prisoners of war that are held in Baku prisons. Um, uh, what can Sweden do within the EU or on its own to help bring them back home? From, um, for, from our friendship group, for instance, we have also made uh, uh, several statements uh, regarding prisoners of war, but also the, 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 the whole situation here. Uh, so what I think is to... The I breach mean, of territorial integrity. Yeah, but we have to push uh, um, Azerbaijan to uh, that uh, in a political way, uh, in discussions, in, in, in contacts with Azerbaijan to try to raise those questions and also raise those questions in the international community, in the, the international organization like UN, in the OSCE, uh, where also Azerbaijan is a part. Uh, and European Council, for instance. Uh, so I think, uh, from a pol uh, from as a politician uh, and a parliamentarian, uh, I mean, the tools we have it's limited. So so what we can do is to to always keep in. I mean, to to lift those questions, to to uh, engage more people in what's happening, to to inform people what's happening, and also make more and more pressure against uh, Azerbaijan. That's the way we can do as a parliamentarian. And if pressure doesn't work, I mean, if condemnations and statements, I'm going back to the same question one more time, but this is really something that our society um, is concerned about. That is the probability of a new escalation, especially on the border of Sunni region, where Azerbaijan has lately taken positions, more positions in more Armenian land, cut off slices from Armenian territory. And so we are really concerned about this. Um, do you believe that the EU will step beyond those statements? Are there more tools of political pressure, legal pressure that have not yet been used? Uh, I don't think I'm the right person to answer that because I'm the member of the Swedish parliament. Uh, I'm not have that insight in what, uh, what EU can do or not doing right now. Uh, but I think it's very important for European Union to open the doors to, to also involve Armenia in the European family, which I consider Armenia is a part of. Uh, and, uh, and perhaps also to provide, uh, I mean, we must pro the West must provide security for, for Armenia, but we also had to engage Armenia in the European family, uh, in the politics uh, and uh, in trade, etc. We have the CEPA agreement, which is very good, and uh, there is also on the table uh, an old association agreement with the European Union. I think we should put that up uh, in the discussion again. Uh, and of course, there is uh, certain things which now uh, uh, 
make that difficult. Yeah, the membership of the CSTO, for instance, when it comes to security guarantees and to provide uh, uh, Armenia with with uh, military equipment, but also the Eurasian Union, uh, which is also a problem when when it comes to to engage more in the European Union. So, so that of course must be uh, debated here in Armenia uh, first uh, in the in the parliament here among the the politicians here and uh, among the population here, uh, and then uh, also. I mean, to, to, uh, to raise those questions again, uh, b because I think that would be a, a great thing. There is a window of opportunity open right now uh, due to the situation and due to what Russia has done here in, the media, uh, in Armenia. And uh, I mean, um, I think most Armenians today uh, have seen that Russia some, somehow betrayed Armenia when it comes to provide security here. Uh, so I think there is a window opportunity now for EU and for the West to, to open up for Armenia and welcome Armenia. And I think we should take this uh, chance right now to do that uh, and engage Armenia even more. Sweden and Armenia have historic ties as well. The trade agreement signed between the Armenian merchants of New Julfa and the Swedish king Karl XI at the end of the 17th century stipulated a number of privileges for the Armenian merchants in Sweden. There have been many diplomats and scientists of Armenian descent throughout the Swedish history. This kind of historical ties bear valuable um, material for cultural cooperation. Do you see prospects of cultural cooperation between the, our countries? For Absolutely. right now, I mean, I read somewhere that we have had connect, uh, contacts in thousands, a thousand year. So it, we have long tradition to have contact between Sweden and, and Armenia. And I think we should uh, keep on building those uh, contacts uh, in, in different areas like culture, for instance. I mean, Armenia is the first Christian state in the world. So I think we have lots in, uh, uh, in common when it comes to uh, the cultural, uh, uh, the culture, and how t we see and uh, think of things. So I think there is lots of uh, we can do much more than we do today. What can Armenia do to become an even more valuable partner for Sweden? I think it's very important to um, to uh, keep on. I mean, what's happening now in Armenia when we, we uh, you're building the, the democratic institutions? You you have. Uh, I mean, you have also in a clear way uh, shown that you are which way you're choosing i mean leaving the old past the uh, from the soviet union time building new democratic institution uh, and uh, uh, becoming more and more like our society uh, which i as a swede think is very good because that also would be much easier to have stronger uh, contacts and cooperation if our our uh, society is more look alike uh, and I think that's very important to, to get rid of uh, corruption and uh, engage more women in, into politics, for instance. That would be easier for us also from uh, the, the Swedish parliament to, to cooperate and strengthen the cooperation. So, so I think doing that would also uh, uh, make it easier to have a string, uh, stronger cooperation. As I already mentioned before, there's a build-up between Sweden and Armenia. That's the impression I get, at least. Um, how has the bilateral political dialogue affected or will affect trade and econo economic relations? I think we, we can, uh, I mean, the trade can be much better than it is today. I mean, I think we, uh, from Sweden, we export uh, certain things to Armenia, but in the opposite way, it's very, very uh, small, uh, I mean, import from, from Armenia. And you have uh, lots of things here we can import uh, when it comes to food and, uh, and beverages, etc. But uh, also we can strengthen the cooperation on trade when it comes to, I mean, we have co uh, Swedish companies. I recently came from uh, from a... Uh, a gaming company um, calling itself not gaming anymore, but Evolution, for instance. So that's a, a very good example for the, that Swedish companies established here in Armenia. Uh, and I think we also can have Armenian companies established more in, in Sweden so we can uh, increase that cooperation. Uh, so I think see a future where we uh, can uh, uh, increase that very much uh, comparing today in both directions, not only that Sweden export companies here and and, uh, uh, and things, uh, but also in the opposite way. You're living in a few hours. Have you managed to enjoy your short stay in Armenia? I have, thank you. Uh, we, uh, we arrived uh, Friday morning and we went to the EU mission, uh, visited that, and during the weekend it was more cultural um, um, visits. 
uh, and uh, some free time. So uh, I also had to, the chance to, to see uh, old friends here. Thank you. Thank you. Bjorn Sjöder, Member of Sweden Parliament, President of Sweden Armenia Friendship Group, is my guest tonight.